In Master Angler, I hook up with one of Australia's most recognisable fishermen, Darren Dizzy Borg. Featured in the popular DVD series Fishing Down Under and in numerous magazine articles all over the country, Dizzy has made his mark as an exceptional brim angler, as well as developing lures within his own brand, HM Lures. G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Master Angler. I'm here with uh, former three times AFC fishing champion, Darren Dizzy Borg, and you might remember him from one of the episodes that we did, Brim Fishing Secrets on YouTube. Welcome. Thanks, mate. Good to be here. Now, we're going to talk about brim fishing. You've been doing it for a long time. How long have you been fishing for? Uh, well, I've been fishing for oh, 51 years, I suppose you could say. I started when I was uh, probably crawling around in the bottom of the boat. My, <laughs> my uh, grandfather used to tell me they used to sit me in the corner there. They used to throw a uh, hand line over the side, the old cork hand lines, and uh, put it between my legs, and that was me fishing. And they reckon when the cork line went off, they, they pulled the fish in for me, and that was it. So I actually started. <laughs> I actually started fishing the easy way, with everyone doing everything for me, which is the best way to be. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's like you pretty much, you know, showed me how to fish for brim. Our first episode, well, it wasn't that great because you caught all the fish, but uh, oh, you come good right at the last oh! cast, mate. Oh, yeah, at the very last cast. <laughs> What, what were your first memories or your earliest memories of chasing brim? Um, I actually did do a lot of brim fishing uh, when I was younger. I did a little bit of it. Um, I didn't really get right into the brim fishing until probably 20 years ago when the ABT circuit started and I decided to have a go at it. Prior to that, I used to spend most of my time uh, chasing dewfish and doing a lot of land-based game and a lot of offshore fishing. Uh, and as the years went on, it just gets a bit hard to hard on the body to keep going out and doing that style of fishing so when the brim fishing bit came along it was a it was an easy changeover for me to go and give something else a try um, I was fortunate enough that you know brim fishing is very similar to a lot of everything else that I've done in my life whereas most fishing is the same once you sort of understand the basic secrets of where when and why you can pretty much go out and, and have a reasonable amount of success yeah and you chased a lot of jewfish um, or Iluka. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I spent, uh, I suppose it was uh, nearly 15 years down there, I think, in Iluka. And I used to go dew fishing every single day. What was your biggest? 36 kilos. Wow, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about brim. We're going to, no holds bars. Tell me, you know, if you were just starting off with brim fishing, what are some of the questions you're asked by? Well, the, a lot of a lot of the time, people probably the most the most popular question I get asked is, "What's the best lure?" And really, there isn't a best lure because each lure is designed for a different purpose in a different area. So you really got to work out what area you're fishing. Are you fishing sand flats, weed flats, rocky flats? Are you fishing deep water, bridge pylons, pontoons? There is the right lure for the right area, and that's what people need to learn. And if they're unsure, they first they've got to work out what area are they going to go fishing, and then they need to go into their tackle store and say to the guys, this is where I want to go fishing, what lure should I use? Because the guys in the stores know what they're doing these days, much more than they did 30 years ago. Today you go into a tackle store, and I guarantee that the young fella in there is fishing every second that he's not working, and he knows what to do. So he should be able to point you in the right direction. You just got to tell him where you're going to fish, and you'll be right. Mm. And what's what's probably your favourite style of brim fishing? What do you, where do you like to chase them generally? Um, you know the flats, off rocks, beaches. Where do you like to go? I'm I've got a bit of a, a, a thing about fishing uh, the big break walls for the big fish. Um, I really like that sort of style of fishing because it's it's real white knuckle sort of stuff, but with light line. You've got to be smart and you've got to be on the ball. There's lots of big fish in those areas and you, you can't fish too light, but you've got to fish light enough to get the bite sometimes from these fish because they're old and they're cunning and they're smart. That's one thing about brim. They are a smart fish and they work things out really quickly. So you've got to be on the ball. Um, it, it's, it's not the easiest of fishing, but it's probably the most exciting fishing for me. Apart from that, I really do like the flats. I love fishing flats because flats is very visual. You can sort of see where you're casting. You can almost see the fish at times, or, or, or there's days where the, the flats are that shallow, you can actually pick up structure. And you've been with me some of those times when you have seen the fish sitting around things in the water, and we know if we cast to them, we're going to pull one out. Mm. So, I mean, that sight casting is a lot of uh, very exciting. 
the, the thing that everyone used to say to me that you're so good at deep fishing and it's probably the bit that I dislike the most is fishing the deep water for the brim because I, I find it's very very close to bait fishing it's very slow very uh, relaxed and very yeah, finesse if you move anything too quick in the deep water the big fish just don't touch it mm -hmm. so it's probably the the one part of the the style of fishing that I um, like the least but it's the one part that I was most successful in all the ABT tournaments because I was probably the only one with the patience in those days to do it you know when you're talking about competition fishing especially what's makes the difference between a good brim fisherman and an excellent brim fisherman because we know sometimes it's just that much what do they do differently well i'll tell you i don't know what a lot of the other guys do but i know what i used to do and that's experiment in the moment always be prepared to do something outside the box because sometimes that's what pays off if you're just going to keep throwing the same lure at the same fish you're going to have the same result and that's why some people always get the same result and never quite get across the line. If you need to find those big fish, you need to experiment. You need to move. I mean, it was always a saying is you, you don't leave fish to find fish when I was fishing ABD tournaments. And I was always a believer, always leave the small fish to find the big fish. Okay. So if you're it just catching sense. the same fish all the time, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Move. Go look for something else. And that's what I used to do. And I used to fish some areas where I knew I wasn't going to get very many bites, but if I got one, would be a big fish. And that would be the difference. I might spend an hour to get that one bite, but that one bite could be an 800 gram, 900 gram or a kilo fish. And when you start catching them and you're throwing out 500 grams, you're going up the leaderboard really fast. So you've got to be prepared to experiment. And you've got to be prepared to do something outside the, the box, outside the mm -hmm. square. If you're just going to do the same thing that everyone else does, you're going to have the same result that everyone else has. Yep. So the, I know that's what I do, and I, I, I reckon that most of the guys that, that do really well in tournament fishing are the same, because you, you see them. I, I know they're doing the same sort of things because I can see them moving around at the same time I'm moving around, so obviously it means they've caught their fish, now they're looking for bigger ones. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you, you just got to be uh, experimental because it's like the, the weekend guy, he goes to the same spot with the same lure and catches the same fish. After a period of time, there's no more fish in that spot, that lure doesn't work and he's got nowhere else to go. Mm. Whereas the guy that's out there experimenting all the time, always looking for new ground, has always got somewhere to go and catch fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about the, um, the seasons and, and the times to catch brim. Generally, I know it varies, different states, different areas, different climates, but as a general rule, say Queensland, uh, northern New South Wales, When's a good time to fish? Because you were just talking about it before that they should be coming on soon and we're in just the start of Yeah, May. Well, May? down south, I'd say that the northern New South Wales, you probably find the fish are there already. Uh, we've had a few trips out lately up here and there are traveling fish there, but most of them are, are males. They're small males and they usually get here first and the bigger females will come down the rivers and follow them in a little bit later on on the moons. So winter time is always the easiest time to catch brim because they school up to spawn. So um, when you're plastics fishing, you're going to be able to catch a, a lot of brim a lot easier. When you go into the spring and summer months, they tend to spread out a little bit more. Um, and we find that, that the flats seem to be the area that fire the best a lot of the time. Um, and that'll always depend on the weather. Because sometimes when the flats are quiet, you'll find if you go into pontoons and docks or bridge pylons, they'll be firing there. It, it's, a, it's a funny thing with the brim because they don't generally always fire in all the areas at the same time. There'll always be one area that'll be firing and the rest will be a bit quiet. Mm -hmm. And that's why you hear a lot of guys say we've got a milk run when they're tournament fishing. They go and try all the different spots to try and crack the pattern and work out where the fish are and then they'll make the most of it. So you find that the, the spring and summer months you, you tend to go up rivers or on the, on the flats. The uh, winter months you tend to stay down the, the bottom of the rivers or on the beaches and you, you'll always do really well. Mm, good, good advice too. So um, so we've got an idea of, of what time of the year to chase them. Um, now let's talk about sort of the technical side. So we're talking about rods, reels, lines, and then you've already touched on lures before, but we'll go into that in more detail. So where do you start? So finesse fishing, we need to buy a rod, we need to buy a reel, uh, and this is what's going to help you guys. So where do you start? Get the right thing the first time the poor man pays twice in a lot of cases. But yeah. 
these days it's, it's not too bad because uh, most of the, the tackle shops will have uh, combos set up from you know around that $150 mark up to over a thousand you know you can spend as much as you want on the gear these days it's way past my budget <laughs> and my budget too don't you worry about that <laughs> um, I've never used a lot of real top-end gear in my, in my life. I've been close to it a little bit when I was tournament fishing, but I could never quite justify uh, spending that much money on the gear because the way I treat my gear, uh, <laughs> I'm a I fisherman. It. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get treated very nice. Um, but yeah, they, like 150 bucks, $200, you'll have a combo which will give you your, your reel, your line, and your and your rod. And, and it'll be reasonable these days. There's a lot of reasonable gear out there for that sort of price. Um, you can start there and then and work your way up. You don't have to spend that big dollars, but there are advantages with spending bigger money. You find that, uh, one, the drag systems on the, the reels will be much better. You'll find that uh, the rods will be built a little bit better and probably have uh, better guides on it, which allow you for more accurate casting and more distance in your casting. So you know, there's a increments. As you, as you spend more and the, the gear gets better, you're using a better tool, so you'll naturally be a little bit better at what you're doing when it comes to the, the fishing side of things. But it mm. doesn't mean you can't start off with something basic. It'll still mm. do the job for you. Mm. And, and say typically, what are we looking at? You know, say we start from the rod and the reel. Um, they have different sizes and, and different kilos and poundages. Where do we start? Maybe look at the taper first. Yeah, you know. well look, the, the, the basic, basic rod to start with generally is a two to four kilo, is, is generally where most of us would start um, as, a, as a basic all round rod. And you, you want a probably 2000 size reel. Um, the only reason I say 2,000 over 1,000 is they've got bigger drag washers and they'll have a, a better and a smoother drag. Um, I don't use 1,000 reels anymore. It was many years ago I did and then I sort of learned after a while that the drag systems weren't reliable long term so I started using 2,000 size reels and I've had um, no, no issues since I changed over. So, you know, the one thing I'd say in a reel is definitely look at a 2,000 size reel. You're going to be uh, much better off long term. Mm -hmm. So you're basically looking at something that's got a reasonable drag, it's not going to be too jerky in a reel, um, and you're a rod that's two to four kilos. I mean, you can go one to three, you can go you know, two to five, one to five, one to four, there's all different ones. But the two to four will basically do everything you need it to do. Yep. And then you can worry about zooming in on the specialised type of rod for flicking into pontoons or a special rod for throwing out in the flats or a special rod for fishing break walls or a special rod for fishing crank crabs and yeah you know, there's there's millions of them out there mm. but two to four two thousand size reel perfect starting position yep okay and um let's talk about lines now we've got braid we've got mono we've got fluorocarbon um you can have braid to a fluorocarbon or mono leader fluorocarbon all the way through what do you prefer and why I, I use both when I'm when I'm throwing um, hard body lures when I'm cranking I use uh, fluorocarbon straight through uh, simply because it allows the fish to hook itself basically uh, you won't feel the fish always biting when you're using fluorocarbon versus a, a braided line but what happens the fish can't feel you either mm. so a lot of the time the fish will grab the lure it'll, it'll turn and start to move away and the stretch in that line will actually set the hook for you so you don't have to, you know, you don't miss so many fish. It, it's also good for bringing a fish in. A lot of stretch in the line, a lot of bend in your rod. Everything's working as a shop absorber. You don't have hooks pulling so quick. Um, there's a lot of advantages in it. The disadvantages, as most people know, is you won't feel the fish biting. Whereas when you go to braid, which we do a lot of braid when we're fishing uh, soft plastics, because we want to feel the bite and we want to know when to set the hook. So it's a little bit of a di it's a bit of a different uh, trade-off because soft plastics it's lift and drop, lift and drop. So yeah, the braid works well for you. You can feel the bite as the lure's dropping down. You know you've got to wind up and, mm -hmm. and set the hook. Whereas with straight through fluorocarbon, you're just constantly winding, and you want that fish to grab that lure, turn away, not actually feel you, and all of a sudden the stretch mm -hmm. of the line will set the hook for you. Yeah, and that's where you'd probably use like your HM lure FB35. Yep sort of uh, little hard bodies. Straight yep. through fluorocarbon. And the reason we, uh, well, the reason I designed that lure to start with was because we wanted something that we could cast a long way, mm. but we could cast it on the average gear, which is the $200 combo, not, mm. not the $1,000 one. Mm. So the average person can buy it and they can still cast it a long way. 
as we always say, just be careful on your first cast. You don't want to go catching the bears in the tree. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I did a bit of that. <laughs> and I and when I first came out and fished with you, I had uh, I had braid and fluorocarbon. You had fluorocarbon all the way through. I spent half my time retying the FG knots. Yep. And I lost time and you were catching fish. Yep. That's, so, that's a big advantage yep. of the straight through. And I mean, yep. we, we'll uh, use, well, I'll use straight through uh, fluorocarbon even when I'm throwing uh, plastics. Um, crabs, anything. Um, there are times when uh, I prefer the, the braid, but if it's a really snaggy area and I'm losing a lot of gear, well, I don't use braid very often. It's straight onto the straight through fluorocarbon because I know once I bust it off, I can tie on and be back in there straight away for a fish. Yep. So that was a lesson you learned. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about one of your favorite lures. And, and I know probably one of the most successful brim lures in Australia because they sold like hotcakes after we did that episode. Of brim fishing secrets so you've brought them back again yeah the old fbs are they're, they're well and truly back again um we've uh done a little bit of work to it this time we've done a bit of work to the internals and, and done a little bit of redesigning um it was hard to improve on the original but we have yeah. we have made a little improvement uh it's mainly in the in the weight balance system and and how it'll uh, uh cast through the air they're already a, a fantastic casting lure which they were what they were designed yeah, i for. love using them and i know a lot of guys love using them as well they, you, you can cast these things so far they're probably the only lure that i've ever used that you can actually cast into a strong breeze and still get it out far enough to catch a fish mm. which is mm. you know pretty rare for a lure but the main reason why these lures do cast so well is uh, when we designed them uh, a lot of lures have bibs on them that come down below the bottom plane of the lure so what we've tried to do is we've tried to make a shallow lure and we've put the, the bib out the front and we've kept it inside that plane and we've put the toe point further forward. So what it means is that it still dives, but it won't dive down really deep. Mm. So we've been able to get a, a shallow diving lure that will cast an absolute mile. And it was one of the, the big things that we tried to do because as I said earlier on, I, I like to make gear for the average person to go fishing. Um, I, you can, there's that much high-end gear out there you can buy in Australia these days, it's not funny, but good practical fishing gear for the average person to go and start with, there's not a lot of. So that's why we, we did these and, and that's one of the reasons we brought them back because everyone was, you know, screaming for them as, as you know. And uh, we made those improvements and it's, it's why it's so successful is because it can cast. It can cast into the strike zone of those big fish and you've got more time in that strike zone than, than most other lures that mm. you can throw on the flats. It's just a great lure. And, and sort of what kind of retrieve do you like to use on the FPs? Well, on the FPs, I like to use a, a slow retrieve, but my slow retrieve is very slow. A lot yes. of people tend yeah. to think they're winding slow, they're still winding too fast. Mm. I mean, this, mm. this lure works at such a slow pace, it's incredible. It just gets that nice, lazy wobble and, and sort of through the water. You don't have to wind it fast to get it. If you wind it fast, you're gonna get a, a more erratic, sort of wider action out of it. It's a lot faster, but you don't need that for brim. Mm. Brim aren't, aren't the sort of species that are always keen to chase something down. They're, they're a little bit of a, a lazy fish at times. You've got to slow things down to catch those quality fish. Mm. You know, if they're not keen on it, they're not going to chase it. But if you leave it in their face long enough, they're going to get annoyed and they're going to hit it. Not because they're hungry, but because it's in their face. So yes. learning to wind your crankbaits really as slow as you possibly can mm. will generally pull more of the quality fish. Mm. Small fish don't matter. They're going to eat anything because that's they're still small. But when mm. they get bigger, they get smarter. Mm. And they're the ones that are harder to fool. And you're going to give a few of these away. Yeah, okay. yeah, I brought, uh, I think I brought 10 down for you to give away. So there's uh, 10 of the FB35s, a little packet of them. All sorts of uh, different colours in there. So the one lucky winner is going to get them and uh, they're going to go out right at the right time of year and smack a few big brim on them. Yeah, how awesome. So uh, if you want to win these lures from HM Lures from Darren Dizzy Borg, and I reckon these are one of the best in the country that you can have when you're brim fishing and you can catch other species on them as well. All you have to do is comment HM Lures in the comments on the YouTube channel. We're going to hold it for two weeks and then we're going to announce the winner both on Facebook at Coast Fish TV and on the YouTube channel. Simple as that. So we'll get in contact with you as well and uh, we'll be sending this exact packet off to you guys. Now, 
for any orders of lures of these beautiful FBs or any other lures that Dizzy does, look down in the video description. All the links are gonna be there for you. We're gonna make it really, really easy. Make sure you give us a big like, subscribe to Coast Fish TV, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on all the latest episodes. Thanks, Dizzy. Thanks. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah!